Okay, we're live. Good evening. Um, good evening. This is good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to the February uh, Planning, Economic Development, and Housing Committee. This is a regular committee meeting. I want to welcome all our guests and um, City of Hartford uh, staff with us. Also, I just want to let everyone know that if you would like to um, watch the council meeting or the committee meeting, if you aren't able to make it, you can go to um, Channel 96 on Frontier and, uh, I'm sorry, Channel 96 on Comcast and Channel 6032 on Frontier. And so welcome to the community to the uh, February again, uh, Planning, Economic Development and Housing Committee. Uh, this evening we have, ah, good evening, Councilman. Uh, good evening. Good evening. This evening we have on the, uh, let me, first let me introduce the members. My name is Shirley Surgeon and I am the chair of the Planning, Equity, Development and Housing Committee. And we have with us uh, members, we have um, Councilman Marilyn Rossetti. We have uh, Councilman John Gale. We have uh, Councilman Nick LeBron, not a voting member, but um, Councilman likes to join all the different committee and catch up and see what's going on. So welcome, Councilman, to our committee. We have four items on the agenda this evening. Uh, the first item in the agenda, I will read them for you. It is a um, mayor's resolution uh, confirming the appointment of Kevin Henry to fill the vacancy and James Wolf to replace Linda Sedemeyer for the Housing Authority for the City of Hartford. And this was on our uh, January the 11th. Uh, that was item six on the January the 11th, 2021 agenda. So we have invited um, with us uh, Mr. Kevin Henry and Mr. James Wolf, and we have also invited the director of the uh, Housing Authority, uh, Annette Sanderson, so she can tell these two wonderful volunteers how much work they're going to be volunteering. So, uh, Mr. Henry, welcome. I believe he's still on mute. Thank Are you. Good evening. And Mr. Good evening. Wolf, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Uh, Mr. Henry, you want to tell us a little about yourself? And um, I, Can I just say something, Madam Chair? Yes, ma'am. Councilman, Councilman Mitchum has joined us. Oh, thank you so very much. Um, oh, thank you so very much. And we have also another committee member has joined us, and we have Councilman Mitchum. Welcome, Councilman. Uh, we have just started the uh, committee meeting. The first item of the committee meeting is introducing uh, the members to be joining the Hartford Housing Authority. And the first thank you, Madam Chair. You're welcome, sir. Uh, the first one we would like to invite to tell us a little bit about themselves if as attorney Kevin Henry. Well, first of all, uh, good evening. Thank you for having me. Um, I know my resume was circulated, so I'll tell you a little bit of some things that's not on a resume. Um, I was born and raised in Hartford, actually grew up in public housing, Bowes Park primarily, but lived in Elton Court as well as Stowe Village. Um, I graduated from Fox Middle and Weaver High School, went off to uh, Hamilton College, and came back to the city of Hartford, where my first job was actually at the Hartford Housing Authority. Um, at the time, the executive director was John D. Warlaw, um, and we had probably 5,000 units of housing throughout the, uh, the city of Hartford, and I was in charge of the youth programs, one more particularly this program called the AB Club, where we basically acknowledged students from public housing who had to be average or better and wanted to showcase that there were actually great students coming out of public housing that were doing good things um, versus all the negative things oftentimes we read about. Um, I got a great opportunity to work with Rudy Arno, who was the, the general counsel at the time on a lot of matters legally. Um, I worked with their grant program and then I went off to law school, worked full time at the housing authority, went to law school in the evening. Um, and so I'm very familiar with the housing authority from a resident standpoint. Um, and then also working in the housing authority um, back in 97 to 2005. I remember before Walmart and everything was developed, when John and them were working on that that deal. So to see that economic development situation in that area um, and then to see what's happening in Westbrook Village 
um, what happened in Bose Park. Although I'm sad, oftentimes when I go back there, mm -hmm. see all the development out in in in, in, in um, Bose Park where they changed the name is very impressive. I'm also on the board of trustees for the Boys and Girls Club, and there's a Boys and Girls Club in the Bose Park area. So that's where I frequent, you know, oftentimes. So when I was asked to possibly be on this commission, it was more of a sentimental value to me um, than anything to show kids from public housing that you can live in public housing, you can actually work in public housing, and ultimately be on a board or commission in public housing. So anything is possible. And that's what really motivated me to want to participate on this commission. Oh, great. Thank you so very much. You mentioned a whole bunch of names that goes way, way, way back. Um, so thank you very much, um, Mr. Wolf. And then after Mr. Wolf will open up the questions from the committee. Right. So uh, thank you for the opportunity to uh, come speak before you tonight. Uh, my name is James Wolf. I live with my wife and two children at um, 2 Columbia Street in Hartford at the corner of uh, Columbia and Capitol Ave. Um, and uh, I am the Director of Government Affairs at the Connecticut Group. We're a government relations firm based out of Farmington. Um, before that, I was the Director of Advocacy and External Affairs at Reset Social Enterprise Trust, um, 1429 Park Street. And I worked there um, during my time at Quinnipiac Law School to help um, draft and then pass a piece of legislation that created a new type of corporation here in Connecticut for socially responsible businesses called a benefit corporation. Um, graduated from Eastern Connecticut State University before going to law school. And um, I'm passionate about Hartford um, and public service. I'm the chair of the Columbia Street Park Terrace Special Services District, which is a, a taxing district for uh, our neighborhood that uh, helped solve the, a unique problem with the alleyways behind um, Columbia Street and Park Terrace. And I'm also a member of the uh, Metropolitan District Commission. Um, and uh, very much looking forward to, um, you know, with your approval to serving on the um, the Board of Commissioners for the Hartford Housing Authority. Um, you know, the Housing Authority touches a, a lot of, um, you know, residents of, of the city of Hartford and serves an important role in the city. And I think, um, you know, now um, as much as as much as ever, we realize the importance of having safe decent housing um, since we're all stuck at home uh, 24-7. Okay. Um, insurance is, is uh, you know, critically important. For me. So I'm um, looking forward to the, the dialogue tonight and uh, appreciate the time. Great. Thank you. I um, want to open it up to any committee members who would like to like, ask any questions. Well, I would, Madam Chair. Yes, um, Councilman Rosetti, please go right ahead. Thank you through you. Um, uh, mine is more more of a statement than a, a comment. And I'm, you know, I'm excited to see people who want to serve on the Housing Authority. As I said, um, I had the honor to serve for nine years, the last few years as chair. And really, what it is, is about the residents, they're first and foremost, those were always at the front of our discussions. And certainly, uh, Kevin, you have a, such a wonderful perspective. And Jim, you bring your, your love of the city. And really, I'm not saying this because she's here, even though she is. Um, Annette Sanderson is a true leader, and it was a pleasure to work with her. And I think you are just going to love the, you know, creativity, uh, some of the troubles that we worked through. But Always first and foremost were the residents were at the, the start of the discussion and how did we the bring that to type of housing to the city of Hartford and to the people who were here. So I'm excited that you're stepping in. I, I think it could have been a few women, but I'm just saying that. So <laughs> glad you guys are here and uh, thank you for taking this on. Great. Uh, Councilman Nixon. Thank you. Sorry, I was a little slow on the mute button. Um, yes. I'm just curious. I maybe I was because I was fiddling with my settings because I came in late. But Mr. Wolf, I, you didn't. They said you live in Columbia. Where Where do you come from? Like, where'd you grow up? What's your How'd you come here? Where are you from here? Um, I grew up in Bristol, Rhode Island, uh, and I moved to Connecticut um, to attend Eastern Connecticut State University, um, and. Um, 
I lived in uh, a couple of different places in Connecticut after that. Um, but when I started working at Reset, um, really fell in love with the city of Hartford um, and, um, you know, got engaged to my wife and said, this is this is the place where we need to be. Um, and so we lived on Charter Oak Place for a couple of years and then bought our house on uh, Columbia Street. And, um, you know, we just we love it. Cool. Many other questions? And I do have to announce that um, Councilman Bermudez has joined us, who is also a member of the committee. Uh, Councilman Gill, go ahead, sir. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I'm just trying to draw a connection here. Mr. Henry, do you have a, did you, do you now, or did you have an office at 1429 Park? No, I don't have an office in 1429 Park. Um, oh no, it's, it's, it's 20, it's, it's 2000. What's the, what's the address? 2074 Park Street. There you go. Sorry. Okay. My mistake. I, for some reason, I was going to try to connect you guys, but, but you weren't in the same building. So I, I'm, I'm totally off target. Welcome to both of you. I, 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 I speak on behalf of everybody on council when we say we're so appreciative that people are willing to step forward and take these roles um, uh, and serve on, you know, serve on these, uh, 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 in this case, the, the Harvard Housing Authority, um, which, you know, you're giving of your time uh, and, you know, you're both, you know, very, very uh, uh, qualified people with, uh, you know, you bring a lot to the table. Um, and uh, so, uh, again, it's, it's very appreciative. Thank you both for stepping forward and, and being willing to serve the city. Thank you. Um, got a couple of questions. Mr. Wolf, um, welcome again, and thank you so very much for wanting to serve our community. You also sit on the MDC commission. That's a lot of work, both the commission and I'm, when we're finished here, I'm sure um, the executive director, uh, Mrs. Sanderson, will tell you how much work and uh, Councilman Rosetti is going to attest to how much work she's going to make you work. Uh, how much, how are you going to split your time between the uh, MDC and um, the Housing Authority? Um, well, as I mentioned, I, I worked my way through law school. So, um, you know, splitting your, splitting your time on uh, in, important stuff is something that I've, I've got a lot of experience in. Um, and uh, I recently decided not to run for the, um, the special services district, run for re-election. Um, so, um, you know, I, I, it, it takes late nights sometimes and, uh, and figuring out, um, you know, how to prioritize things, but I've got some experience there. So, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Well, bless your soul. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> really very, very, very active, uh, commission, the city of Hartford. And I want to thank you very much for doing so. Um, and, and Mr. Henry, you bring a total unique experience to the housing authority um, from growing up and working for some longtime uh, officials when you mentioned now uh, Mr. Warlow and going back. And believe me, um, in comparison to, it's not both spark, and, and Mr. Saunders will correct me with the name. Uh, but it's amazing to see the transformation of housing, what the housing authority has done in the city. Um, the, the buildings are just beautiful. Uh, Westbrook Village is going to be gorgeous. Uh, so you two gentlemen are going to join an organization that is really bringing housing authority into the 21st century. So just thank you so very much for your time that you're going to dedicate to this. I wanted to ask Mrs. Um, Sanderson, who's the executive director to say a few words and kind of tell them how much work they're, yeah. they're volunteering and getting themselves into. And thank you very much for joining us, ma'am. Wait, you don't want her to talk them out of it, do you? <laughs> no, yeah, I wouldn't make them really, no, we're not talking them out of it. We just want to let, let them know how realistic this is going to be. No, well, first of all, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for inviting me to your committee meeting this evening. Um, I have had the um, opportunity to um, speak with both gentlemen. Um, I think it was last week or maybe week before last, um, just to kind of introduce myself and um, wanted to um, congratulate them on their nomination. Um, and I also shared a document with them that um, Councilwoman Rosetti was actually instrumental in helping us put together. And it's an actual, it's an orientation policy for our new commissioners. So it's, a, it's an extensive document, which anybody could pick up and 
it describes the housing authority from A to Z in terms of, you know, how we were created, um, our com the makeup of our commission, um, our mission, our, um, our board structure, our, our staff structure. And both of these gentlemen have had the opportunity to read it. Um, and because I wanted them to know, I think as an executive director, it's my job to educate them about what they're walking into. And um, I believe it's been a very helpful document for, for previous um, commissioners. I call it my onboarding document. Um, and I think, you know, I, I, it's because I want to be fair to people so that they know what they're getting into. And yes, we have a lot going on. Um, actually, um, Councilwoman um, Rossetti, uh, this coming Friday is my nine year anniversary. So um, it's serving as executive director and it's been an honor and a privilege for me. I'm also public of public housing, also product of public housing, still village as many of you know, uh, born and raised in Hartford. And so my heart and soul is into uh, the Hartford Housing Authority as well. And I'm, I like being around people that are passionate about our mission. And we've been blessed with um, during my tenure at least, um, and I, I know that there've been great commissioners in the past, but during my tenure, I've been blessed with having great commissioners that understand our mission, that understand their role, that understand my role, um, that are supportive, that wanna work hard. It's my job, quite honestly, to make your job easier, to make things more efficient for you. You know, one of the things that we've done um, over the past couple of years is that we've become computerized. So all of my commissioners have a, have a device um, where they can look back and see all of our previous minutes. Um, I don't hand them a, a big, thick board package anymore, do I, Councilwoman Rossetti? The packages were that thick. One time I had a trunk full, <laughs> to bring it to the Housing Authority to have it shredded. I had a right. trunk full of uh, Housing Authority packets. So it's, it's, and now we're more efficient. You know, everything's computerized. You, you get your board package, it's loaded up on a, on a, on a device. Um, you can look back and look at the historical information. It's a very unique time for several reasons. One, we're in the, we're in the midst of um, redevelopment. We still have more work to do at uh, Willow Creek, formerly Bulls Park, and we still have more work to do at Westbrook Village. Um, those projects uh, nine years ago were just in horrible condition. And um, it's been my honor to work through those issues. Um, we are also in, at a point where we need to, we've been working on repositioning our entire portfolio of properties because HUD has changed. And over the years, HUD support of public housing has changed. And so it's been my goal to become more, I'll call it self-sufficient so that we would not have to rely on the year-to-year -year operating subsidy from HUD and that we would also have the funds to make the necessary capital improvements to our properties. So there's a lot going on. Um, um, internally, um, it's been it's been an interesting time managing public housing during a pandemic. You know, it's been a very challenging time. We we went remote, you know, back in March, and we tried to stay as close as we could to our residents. Um, and we became more than housers. I I discovered we, you know, during this pandemic, people would call us up. Our residents would call us up, you know, just to talk, just to hear a voice because they were isolated. And so we had to, I had to educate my staff about, you know, hey, we, we need to do more. We need to be, granted, we're not, we're not, you know, you know, we're not, we're supposed to just provide housing, but we need to do more from a social perspective. Sometimes you're going to have to listen to a resident for half an hour because you may be their only contact during a day, you know, during this time. So um, I'm looking forward to having you all on board. Um, looking, you know, we've got a, I've already, I have a full agenda for February already. I'm hoping that you get on sooner rather than later. And that um, I, the way, the next step for me, once you're on board would be to set up a call, um, a Zoom call with the two of you and with our current board chair, Jeffrey Stewart, and some of my key staff members to kind of walk you through where we are at and to answer your questions. Um, because again, it's my job to make sure that you, fully understand where we are. And if you have any questions to uh, questions of me, I'm an open book, you know, as um, my board members know, I, you know, take calls 24 seven because that's my job. My job is to run the housing authority and to answer all of your questions and concerns. Thank you for inviting me tonight. Um, and it, Director, thank you very much for saying all those um, information and sharing all that information. I think this is a great idea where you load up all your uh, information on a actual electronic device on a this surface on, on a surface. Wow. We use share we use share file 
to um, to share all of our documents. It was awesome. it was so life changing. It took a little ramp up, I will say, but really mm -hmm. unbelievable. It was great. Mm -hmm. Well, great. So we're not killing all the trees then. Nope. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, any other? Um, Ah, Councilman Sanchez, who is a member of the committee, is with us. Uh, welcome, Councilman Sanchez. Any questions, comments? Hearing none, is there, would like someone who'd like to um, place a motion on the floor? So moved. No, not me. I'm asking someone to place a motion and second it. Oh, I'm sorry. I placed the motion on the floor. To... To appoint uh, Mr. Henry and Mr. Wolf to the housing of the Yeah, so you're favorably recommending the, favorably. the yes. nominee to the uh, to the council on the whole. Yep. Second. Okay, great. We got a uh, motion is, and it's been second. Any discussions? Hearing no discussion. All in favor? Aye. Great. Great. Well, thank you, Mr. Wolf. Mr. Henry, welcome, and thank you so very much again for the time you're going to give the residents in the city of Hartford. You're yeah. welcome to continue joining us and listening to the remaining of our committee meeting. Great. Thank you very much. Have a good evening, everybody. You have you a good well. evening. Take care. So the second item on the agenda is a uh, ordinance from Mayor Bronin amending Chapter 28 Article 10, Section 28-196 of the Neighborhood Revitalization Zone Committees of the Municipal Code. That item was on our January the 11th agenda, and we had a public hearing on that item at our January 19th public hearing. Uh, do we have anyone to speak on item two? Well, uh, someone... Oh. Good evening, Marion. How are you? I'm fine. I, thank you for inviting us to the meeting. Great. Thank you for joining us. Um, Amy, could you tell us a little bit about the ordinance and what it's proposing and doing? I'm sorry, Amy Chambers is the Director of Planning and Zoning. I apologize, Amy. No worries. Um, thank you, uh, Councilwomen, and thank you, Councilors for, Council Members, for having me. Um, the planning division has really just played a facilitator role uh, in this process. Um, this has been really driven by Hartford Next. Um, and so I will defer to Marion um, to speak on behalf of, uh, of Hartford Next and of the, the NRZs. Um, I'm only here to you know, play a supporting role. And if there are additional questions I can answer after Marion has had the opportunity to speak, I'd be glad to. Great. Great. Thank you, uh, Marion. I apologize. Um, would you speak on that item? Yes. Uh, and thank you, Amy. Uh, Hartford Next has served as a, um, a coordinator of this process because South Green has been asking for over three years to be absorbed by its neighboring um, uh, NRZs. And so uh, this year, Paul Bankston from Amy's uh, department has really been instrumental in helping us to bring everyone together. We were able to come to agreement with Frog Hollow. Uh, Frog Hollow has been in, in agreement with this since, since the beginning uh, and formally uh, agreed to it and sent in a letter of of uh, agreement to take on a portion of South Green so that the, the residents there could be represented. Uh, Marge, which is the uh, Maple Avenue uh, organization with Hyacinth Yenny, also agreed to absorb a part of uh, South Green. So we are happy to move forward because every resident within the city of Hartford needs to be and should be represented. I will say that there is a, a portion, still a portion of South Green that is outstanding, but we all agreed that we would move forward with uh, this portion of, of helping out the residents of South Green. Joe Barber is here also representing um, Frog Hollow, and uh, we were expecting Hyacinth to join us to represent uh, Barg, uh, and she may join us at, at a point in time. Okay, uh, great. 
Thank you, Mary. Um, Mr. Barber? Hi. Um, I can't get my camera to work, so um, can you all hear me? Yes, sir. All right, cool. Um, actually, I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't expecting to speak tonight, but uh, as Marion said, um, I'm from the Frog Hollow NRZ, and this probably has been about three years. Uh, South Green approached us, and we were we were unofficially on board probably since the start. We didn't make it official until recently um, with a vote and um, a letter to council. But uh, our and I, I apologize, I don't have the map in front of me. But um, primarily, uh, the the big piece of this for us was that it would. Um, the Frog Hollow NRZ, um, all of Park Street, the whole Park Street corridor, which seemed to make sense, um, and some other peripheral peripheral areas. But um, yeah, we are we're in favor of this, and um, and uh, as is March, so we we hope that we'll be able to move forward. Okay, Mr. Robert, thank you very much for taking on additional responsibility. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, one of the things a lot of our community do not know what the um, neighborhood right is, the neighborhood revitalization zone do. So, Miss Miriam, would you like to explain a little bit uh, what the organizations do in the community? So the we call them the NRZs, the neighborhood revitalization zones, and they, this is to give the residents of each neighborhood a voice and to be able to advocate for uh, whatever they see are the issues within the neighborhood. These NRZs were started back in 1995 with a um, legislation that uh, gave the process by which these uh, organizations could be, um, uh, well, structured. And uh, so they've evolved over time. Um, they are, you know, some, they are very different for each neighborhood because each neighborhood is different. Uh, but again, they were started to, uh, take care of blight to improve the neighborhoods. And, uh, so it's been a lot of struggle and work and, uh, people are, uh, you know, putting their voice forward. Uh, it's, you take 10 steps forward and maybe two steps back and a few side steps. Uh, but it's really about, um, making the neighborhoods more livable, making the city more livable, and uh, helping to uh, get other people to know that we have a beautiful city, it's a nice place to live, and um, you know, just improve the economic uh, viability of the city. Great, thank you. Um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Councilman um, Mission, see your hand. Thank you so much. I, I know I heard uh, Joe Barber say he didn't know the exact boundaries, but so I can understand right. Park Street goes with Frog Hollow. I assume that the, then sort of the part that angles down toward Weathersfield and the going south from the actual South Green that goes toward to the main part of right. And then what's left? What because I heard I heard I think Marion say there's a part that isn't sorted out yet. Yeah, it's the. Um Mary, please correct me if I'm wrong. It's the east side of um, east of South Green, um, from Main Street down to uh, down, down to where Crack is. That little that yeah. little nook between the park and the, yes. um, Charter Oak. Yes. And the other thing that none of the NRZs could come to an agreement on. So we just let it slide for now. It's like no, no one NRZ wanted to take responsibility for South Green itself, um, and there was not there was not unanimity on that point. But we let it drop because we we still wanted to move forward with um, the rest of this. Mary, do I have that right? Uh, yes. Yeah, so uh, the uh, part of what is still outstanding is the Congress Street area. Okay, that's it. Weathersfield, going down Weathersfield toward um, gotcha. uh, Hartford, the high school, and Warren mm. Street, part of Polk Park. I mean, Colt Park. So it's that, that area. That is the. Uh, it's north of Marge, the area that Marge has taken. So, you know, we're going to work through that process and see who can manage that, whether Marge takes it or whether Siscon will uh, come around to absorbing it. 
Uh, Councilman Gale, thank you, Marion. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. I, I was essentially asked, going to ask the same thing as Councilman Mictum, uh, wondering what parts had not been absorbed. And, and uh, Ms. Griffin, uh, you know, hearing what you have to say, it does certainly strike me that CISCON uh, is a natural for a large part of uh, this un, uh, unspoken for area. And I, I don't know to what extent Soto would would want to come down and take Congress Street. That would um, mm, that wouldn't be a that wouldn't be a far fetch for Soto. Um, so I mean we're we, we, we know that from a city planning and, and Ms. Chambers is here uh, from a city planning department uh, uh, perspective. Uh, we've been trying to connect Congress Street to the rest of South Downtown for thirty years. Uh, you know, we thought we were going to get there around 1988 or so, and then everything just came to an absolute uh, halt. But uh, there was tremendous motivation. Anyway, uh, whatever we can do to be helpful, um, I, I don't like the idea of any neighborhood not being represented by an NRZ. Um, I've, I've been active in my uh, NRZ since day one. And in fact, in, in my neighborhood, uh, we had a civic association and went back to the early 1970s, as many of the neighborhoods did uh, when neighborhoods started realizing that by organizing, they could have a little bit more say in what went on in their neighborhoods. And, uh, you know, it's a very empowering thing. Uh, so um, I hope that that we are able to um, uh, put, put these unrepresented folks somewhere. And if need be, please come back to council. Uh, I don't know to what extent we have the power to, to uh, you know, uh, actually put people somewhere, but uh, we'll, we'll certainly try to be helpful, I would guess. So thank you. Councilman Sanchez? I'm sorry, did you want, I'm sorry, ma'am, Mrs. Griffin, did you want to say something? I was going to say thank you for that offer of support and assistance to, to Mr. Gale. Okay. Councilman Sanchez? Uh, Ms. Griffin answered my question in advance. Thank you. <laughs> okay, <great. laughs> <laughs> um, my only question um, to um, Mr. Barber and to you, uh, Ms. Griffin, is um, what additional outreach are you going to do to let the part of South Green know that where they are now um, housed in the two different communities, the two different NRZs? Uh, Joe, I'll let you start with that. <laughs> <laughs> I know you thanked me for that, too. Thank you, Marion. Um, <laughs> I'm... I mean, I, I think part, you know, we haven't figured out that piece yet, I'll be honest with you, but um, I think at least the first step would, for me is reconnecting with the folks from South Green who approached us um, and start that conversation of where's the best place for us to be reaching out for that sector of the neighborhood um, to expand our NRZ membership. Um, so it, this is this is all happening a little helter skelter. Um, but I think now that now that we're all moving in the same direction, we can start having those conversations again, at the very least with the the, the folks who first approached us from South Green. Okay. You guys, you guys have been doing this a very long time. Um, I'm, I echo what Councilman Gale says. I've been actively involved in my neighborhood NRZ from the inception from back in the 90s. So uh, we know how much work goes into actually, you know, reaching out to the neighbors and getting them actively involved so they can be a part of saying what goes on in their neighborhood. So Mr. Barber, thank you so very much for, under, for taking that portion. And Ms. Griffin, thank you for organizing to get that together because as Councilman Gale says, no community should not be represented. Right. So um, whatever we can do as uh, for council to help you guys, uh, please let us know. Uh, Councilman Gale, there was a great idea about Soho going down to Congress Street. I've heard about that years and years and years ago. Uh, so it was a great time now. Yeah. Well, <laughs> my other comment, Madam Chair, is if if nobody wants to adopt South Green, mm -hmm. it strikes me that Senator Chris Murphy has already adopted it. So let's <laughs> volunteer him to be Senator, Senator Murphy. <laughs> but oh, he lives in that neighborhood. Oh, I did. Oh, wow. Okay, so we just you know have him well, be. You, I, if anybody did not see the light show that was on the South Green uh, this uh, Christmas season, I don't think it's still up. But but that okay. was a, that was a fantastic. Fantastic. Well, it's still up, John. If you go in early in the morning, you can see it. It's oh. really cool. 
It's yeah. yeah. So John, Senator my Murphy. Understanding just is that Senator Murphy? So yeah, he go, just go Senator Murphy. Three we, months we, we, ago. I'm sorry. What was that? Senator Murphy, Murphy just moved. moved there about three months ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, he, Senator, bought the car he bought the carriage house on Charter Oak. Oh. oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So this is now his neighborhood, and and so now he's, uh, uh, you know, he's he's helping to beautify his own neighborhood, which is a great thing. Awesome, Marion, Mrs. Griffin, there you go. That is good information that we did not know, and therefore that is helpful. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You can reach out. Uh, any additional questions, uh, Councilman Sanchez? I'd like to make a motion to send this to council favorably, uh, sending the ordinance amended as is uh, chapter 28, article 10, section 28-196. Second. Great. We have a motion has been uh, properly seconded. Any discussions? Hearing no discussions, uh, how do we say, how do we vote on this? All right. Aye. Great. Aye. So the motion has passed favorably uh, to um, be sent back to the council of approving the uh, the neighborhood revitalization, the South Green neighborhood revitalization zone, um, being incorporated with um, Frog Hollow and March. Uh, Mr. Barbara, Ms. Griffin, thank you so very much for all the work you do on behalf of the city. I know you love the city. That's why you put in extra overtime. <laughs> now to get this done. So thank you, gentlemen, and thank you so very much for doing this. Thank, thank you, you for folks having for having us. Okay. You're welcome to say on the rest of the meeting, we have got one more item. Uh, well, two items, we, we may roll into one. Uh, the third item in our agenda is a resolution uh, confirming the appointment of Zoe Chatfield. I hope Mrs. Chatfield is here with us uh, to the Hartford Parking Authority. Mrs. Chatfield is also I'm going to be um, volunteering again uh, to the Historic Preservation Commission. I want to know where you got all th this. is wonderful. Thank you so very much. Uh, Mrs. Chatfield, is, is, is she with us? Oh, here you go. I apologize. No, it's okay. Welcome. Welcome to the Planning and Economic Development okay. Housing Committee. Uh, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? We did have your resume. But we'd like you to introduce yourself to the people who watch the uh, the committee meeting. Okay. Um, uh, my name is Zoe Chatfield. I'm the director for uh, Free Center in Hartford, which is located in the former Goodwin Library Building in the south end of Hartford. Um, we're on the neighborhood line with Behind the Rocks and the southwest neighborhoods. Um, I... Um, so I've been doing, so I've been, that has been the um, focus of my work for the last two years since moving into that space. Um, and I'm a longtime Hartford resident. I currently am living in the West End in high school. I lived in the South End, actually right down the street from where I now work uh, in that former library building. Um, I am interested in how we can create the best public spaces possible for Hartford residents. Um, and parking and historic preservation, you know, don't seem very related, but they're both things that are, they shape how we experience our environment. Um, and because of that, I would like to be involved in uh, both learning about how things are currently working with those commissions and being able to provide my own perspectives. Um, I feel very awkward right now, sorry. <laughs> oh no, don't be. Uh, um, we're, we're pretty cool, we're pretty laid back here. So. Uh, yeah, and that's, I mean, I, so I, you know, I got my bachelor's in sociology and urban studies. I got a graduate certificate in 2019 from UConn in GIS and which is mapping. Um, and for during that time, uh, my focus, was continuing to like map Hartford specifically. So I, uh, which uh, the, so those projects are listed on my resume that you have. Um, and I'm actually starting my master's uh, this month in community development and planning. So. Thank you. 
You've taken on some another two really great committees, the Parking Authority and the Housing Preservation Committee. So uh, any questions for many members? Councilman Gale? I, I, I just want to say that Ms. Chatfield uh, understates her pedigree. Uh, she, <laughs> uh, uh, both her parents are Hartford born and raised and her grand uh, 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 grandparents on at least one side, I, mean, I think on both sides are long time. She's shaking her head. Yeah, both sides. Yeah. I, I happen to know because her grandparents are neighbors of mine. Uh, a grandmother or grandfather is now deceased. who was a Trinity College professor of quite, uh, quite renowned uh, Jack Chatfield. Uh, so uh, uh, Zoe comes to us with uh, with quite a wealth of, of background and experience on uh, not only Hartford issues but but Hartford issues as they interact with social issues, and it's it's great to see her um, stepping forward and uh, being willing to uh, join these commissions and 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 thank you as we thank everybody else uh, uh, for being willing to give of your time uh, uh, on behalf of the city. So thank you, Zoe. Thank you. That was nice. Right. Uh, I have to go. Any quest? There was a comment from someone. No, but I just want to echo Councilman uh, Gale's uh, comment. Uh, it is really great to see young people like yourself uh, want to be involved and in giving back to the community. So thank you so very much for doing so. Uh, I think you've got some great committees, as you said. Uh, transportation, actually, you know, uh, learning about the transportation in the city is going to be wealth of information. And I believe, um, Amy, are you also involved with the um, the Housing Preservation Committee? Yes, um, my division staffs the uh, HPC. Okay, great. So, Zoe, there you go. You just find you're going to meet the first the staff person, um, you know, in the future. Uh, just a couple of questions, Amy. How many members are on the um, this committee? Um, so we have uh, seven uh, openings. There are five uh, commissioners, two alternates, and we have one additional uh, space open on the commission at this point in time. So we're still looking for another commissioner. Okay. Well, thank you. So, uh, Ms. Chatfield, thank you for stepping up. You're filling these vacancies. I really appreciate that. Thank you. I'm really uh, excited. You're excited? Great. Good. Uh, and want to make a motion on the floor if there's no more questions or discussion? Make a motion in favor of recommendation for Zoe Chatfield. Okay. Let me see. Here, Councilman Bermuda has made the motion. I think Councilman Gale seconded it. Okay. It's, right? Yeah, it's so noisy. Did Councilman Gale you second? Okay, great. Uh, any questions? Any, I'm sorry, any discussions? Uh, hearing none, how do we vote uh, to send this, uh, both um, um, to both the, uh, the Housing Preservation uh, Commission and also the Housing Authority. So we're both, we're voting on both. I'm sorry, hold on, hold on a second. Aye. Aye. Mitchum? Aye. Oh, wait a second, Councilman Mitchum, before we vote, Councilman Mitchum had his hand up. Oh no, that that was I was raising my hand to, to say aye. Oh, okay. So and I'm sorry, Councilman Sanchez, are we saying we're okay? Yes. Aye, right. yes. Great. So we're voting for both uh um to have Miss Chapfield um volunteer. I'm gonna use the word volunteer, uh to be a commissioner on the housing, I'm sorry, the historic preservation uh commission and also on the Hartford Parking Authority. So there's two appointments we're doing for two committees. Just want to make sure everyone understands that. And we're just voting to two items into one at one time. Is that allowed, uh, Attorney Velasco? A little difficulty getting to the unmute button. <laughs> <laughs> Knew you're waiting to hear from me. So you want to you want to act on both uh, the appointment to both committees in one? Yes, sir. Um, or two, I mean, two separate votes. I, I suppose. Uh, 
I suppose it, it, it doesn't really, uh, it really doesn't matter which way you want to do it. If you want to do it for, for convenience and do it in a single vote, I, I think it's acceptable. Um, you know, unless there's going to be, the only concern would be if, if you anticipate that there's going to be some opposition uh, by members to, to placing her on both committees, in which case the, the second vote would allow you to to address that or to allow for that. No, but I haven't heard anything from what I've heard thus far that suggests that there's anyone who is going to oppose her appointment. No. I believe we're all in favor of um, recommending uh, Ms. Chagfield to both the um, the, um, the sorry to both uh, the Hartford Parking Authority and the Historical Preservation. So, uh, Ms. Chasfield, thank you so very much. Congratulations! Take, take the vote, Madam Chair. Take the vote. I didn't take the vote. I thought we all did. You guys said hi. Okay. I, I okay. fine. Hi. <laughs> no, no, we're going to do this again. All right, we're going to make sure this is done properly. So, we had a motion, and it was um, uh, motion by um, Councilman Bermudez. Uh, second by uh, Councilman uh, Gail. There was no uh, discussion. And so how do we um, say on voting for Ms. Chadfield for both the commissions? Aye. Aye. Right. So we have a favorably, uh, everybody's favorably voting to send Ms. Chadfield, um, favorably appointing her to both the uh the Hartford Preservation uh, Commission and the Parking Authority. Congratulations, Ms. Tatfield, and thank you so very much for working uh, on behalf of the residents in the city of Hartford. Thank you. All right. Um, that was the last item we had on the agenda. Uh, so seeing there is no other item on the agenda, I am going to call the, oh, sorry, Councilman Gail. Yeah, Madam Chair, I'm just wondering if, uh, uh, Perhaps next month you could ask development services to come to this committee and give us an update. Um, you know, kind of let us know uh, what's been going on. With, you know, development services is such a large department with housing, economic development, planning and zoning, unless licenses and inspection, and now blight. If uh, if they could just give us a you know sort of a quarterly report, uh, what's going on, so we might have an idea. Uh, as to what they have in the works. I, I, I think uh, the city and the council would probably uh, uh, both welcome that and be appreciative of it. Uh, Councilman Gale, I am way ahead of you. We talked about this last year. Um, we have a uh, 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 email was sent to um, the director asking for this to be done sometime late February, I mean, sometime late February or early March, uh, because we didn't know, we tried to schedule a special committee meeting um, so I'm trying to get a date from development services for all their division, all their six division to do a presentation to the PD and H uh, committee. Uh, I also forward uh, to the director a uh, report that you shared with me that was done last year and asked the director if we could get uh, a similar report uh, with the current um, pro projects that are going on within the city. So as soon as we get a date, I was going to send it out to the committee members and uh, ask for uh, their support in calling a special committee meeting that night. With six division, it's going to be a long, you know, a couple of, you know, you know, 15, 20 minutes with all the uh, questions. So it could be a long evening. So I didn't want to schedule it on a on the March uh, uh, committee meeting night, just in case we may have any items uh, from February to be um, to be uh, to be taken up in committee. Wonderful, okay. thank you, Madam Chair. Right, so that should be coming out as soon as a date is scheduled. Um, that should be coming out, inviting all the members uh, to the uh, to the committee meeting and any other council members, uh, just like um, Councilman. Uh, LeBron wants to drop in and listen to what um, um, the Development Services Division uh, is doing. So hearing no other discussions, um, we have uh, finished our job on the committee. I call the committee uh, to close. I want to thank everyone for coming. We had a forum and I want to thank the community for listening to the Planning, Economic and Development Committee. Thank you, thank you. and good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. So